How's it going guys and welcome back to the Discovery. Today I'm doing an unboxing and review of my new helmet. This is the Shoei GT Air 2. Okay, now here is the box that as you can see it comes with the Shoei branding all over it. Um, and it's relatively lightweight as well. It comes with a little label at the side here to tell you what uh, size you're getting it in, but there's not really much to show from the uh, outside. So uh, over in the fact that obviously showy products were well, well made, well known for the manufacturing, five year guarantee with this thing uh, with showy as well. So let's open this thing up. Okay, so we've got two flaps up the sides there and two others from the other side. And then inside there, you've got another flap which you open up, uh, which when you un uh, unravel it here, you've got a little packet here which is actually stuck down to the cardboard which has got your manual and other bits and bats. So we'll have a look at that in a second. Just pull out the helmet which comes, oops, Let's get it out, there we go. So let's pull out the helmet, which comes nicely in its really nice kind of showy uh, bag that you get with it, a little helmet carry bag. Um, so if you are putting it away for storage, you've got a nice little bag there that keep it protected from getting scratches. Um, just dump this on the side here. Um, and also you have another manual in there as well, how to use a helmet properly. And uh, depending on who you're buying it from, they also include a pin lock for the clear visor that's in there as well. So that comes included with the Shoei GT Air 2. Nothing else in the box there, so let's just put that to the bottom there and we'll have a look at the packet to see what we get inside there. Let's have a look what we get inside. So you do get this little uh, oil, uh, it's like a silicon oil and the idea of it is you can use a little uh, cotton bud and seal around the rubber seal of the visor where it meets the helmet to give you a better seal to stop water from coming in and you can just refresh it every now and then. It tells you how you do that properly in the helmet manual. Um, you've also got how to in lock, install the anti-fog sheet, sheet pin. So basically, obviously, because it's a pin lock visor, um, it already has two pin lock pins uh, attached to the visor, but it gives you two spare ones in this packet here uh, in case you lose them or they get damaged or what have you. Um, and that tells you how to fit it as well, which is pretty cool. Um, you also have here a little uh, uh, plastic trim removal tool, which is showy brandy, which is pretty nice. And what this tool does is it allows you to flip out the bits of plastic which you'll need to fit a uh, Senna SRL2 uh, intercom system, so that comes included, and it also has a little uh, hexagon, uh, you know, tool there as well to uh, remove and tighten or position the pin lock pins as well, which is a nice little touch. Otherwise, it'll get a bit difficult to do. Um, another thing you've got in here is the uh, showy instructions for use. It's another kind of guide, which is a bit more in depth than the how to properly use your helmet one, which is more of a quick start guide. You also have two showy stickers in there as well. And you have a warning label, which is about the warranty and what can avoid it. So that's everything that you get in the packet there as well. So let's have a look at the helmet itself. Showy actual helmet, which comes in this really nice kind of a protective baggy here. So I'm just going to unravel it and pull it out which is cool let's put this there so i kind of kind of rest it on there so it doesn't get scratched up or anything so that's the actual helmet itself the showy gt air 2 and this is in the uh it's called the uh, matte gray uh or it might be called anthracite or gun metal depending on what your website says but this is the matte gray colorway that you get here so it's really nice and sleek looking helmet as well um it's not got any uh, graphics on it it's just a straight matte grey, the only graphics you've got is a showy logo at the front there and the showy logo and GT Air 2 at the back there as well. Um, you've got a little visor cover here as well from when you purchase it in the shop. Um, obviously, depending on where you buy it from, most people say uh, if you do remove this uh, uh, cover, then you can't actually return it to so check where you buy it from. Um, I've got a link in the description if you wanna check that out. Um, where you can purchase it from, uh, which you'll also get the, uh, the pin locks included. So I'm just gonna take this off here. Let's take it off. 
So it's just like a kind of like a phone screen protector effort. And there you go. So this has already got the pin lock installed into it there. Depending on, again, depending on where you buy it from, you might have the pin lock already pre-installed. You might not, it might come separately in the box as well. So bear that in mind. So this one's already got the pin lock installed and it's got a really nice uh, clear visor in there as well. Um, so let's have a look at the front of it. You got your um, uh, chin vent there, uh, which you can open and close. Really, really reassuring clicks. You can't do it accidentally, it won't go accidentally. You'll definitely need a bit of force to actually move it up and down. On the top there as well, you've got a, a vent, top, close, and back, you know, forward, close, sorry, uh, back, open. Um, and it's again really easy to operate with a, you can't really miss it really with a glove. Um, on the top back here, you've got some passive vents as well. Um, which you can see there, so they're passive, you can't actually close them. Um, and then on the back here, um, you kind of got a bit of a spoiler kind of thing, which kind of vents off like that. It's not too sporty, we haven't got like the fins on it or anything like that. And I think when it's um, in its uh, kind of, uh, compared to like um, sports bike themed helmets that have got like, you know, fins, it's a bit more reserved. It's more st uh, style for a sport touring kind of riding use. Um, on this side here, you've got the sun visor control there, which, you know, you just kind of slide and backwards and forwards. Um, you know, t I have been on rides with this before and it kind of tends to uh, depend on what gloves you've got. It might be a bit filly at the start to kind of remember where it is, get that muscle memory in, because it is quite a low profile lever. Uh, but once you do remember where it is, it's kind of easy. Um, on the front here, to close the visor, there's actually a little uh, latch system. So you've got this little rubber grommet here and then this uh, uh, little lip on the visor actually slams down and until you clip it down like that it's not completely sealed and what that does it creates a tighter seal around the visor to stop the uh, obviously a first to stop help the pin lock work better and b to stop rain from getting in and if you do find rain you're still getting in that's why they give you that silicon oil in there to uh, kind of uh, lube up that uh, gasket around there but to be honest it's a really good mechanism some people have seen complain saying like they find it a bit too hard to close but to be honest I don't think it's hard at all when you're riding it's not hard to do because you'll do it with one glove and it's not hard to open and close at all and there's quite a lot of um, uh, you know positions you can have the visor in and it's very solid very well made it doesn't feel like it's flimsy or going to break anytime soon as well when you do remove that uh, sun visor down um, you can put it in any position again with the uh, uh, with the little uh, gauge there so if you want it fully open fully closed over your halfway wherever you kind of want it you can put it there and it will stay there as well which is kind of good to see and it doesn't like flop down as well when you're shaking if you have got it up and you find him you have to kind of put, push it back up that you can do with some other helmet brands so that's good to see there as well this little uh, breath guard here is removable you can just pull it out which is kind of cool and then so is the chin guard there at the bottom to stop wind that is removable as well or as course is all the interior fabrics as well. So let's uh, have a look closer at the interior here. Now the cheap pads of the helmet are fitting with these little red tabs here and the whole point of them is if you are unfortunately in an accident and you can actually emergency service you can just pull on these tabs and the cheap pads should come right out without uh, interfering with your neck which makes it easier for them to remove the helmet from you which is pretty cool. Um, now the helmet itself doesn't come with a double D ring, it's a micro ratcheting system um, that show we have patented and it uses a stainless steel uh, ratchet. Um, so the idea is it kind of goes in like you know like that and then you can use the uh, the pole tab thing to remove it um, bear in mind that uh, I found when actually wearing it that this strap this is its longest extension and it does actually touch the neck um, where your Adam's apple could be so depending on what your neck is like um, that might touch it and it might become a bit irritating so I recommend trying it out uh, before you buy it just in case you're not happy with that um, now this obviously can fit the center SRL2 um, 
intercom system which is actually already fitted this to this one which means on the side there you've got the center srl2 comm system there where you would have had blanking plates so there's one there and then the antenna lives on this side but it doesn't really you can't really see much about it um, so that comes with it as well which is pretty cool and it makes it completely integrated uh, but I've got a separate review for that, which I recommend checking out on my channel if that's of interest to you and to show you how it gets installed. So inside the helmet here, you've got the um, uh, cheek pads, which are by stock. They come with 35 mil uh, wide cheek pads um, on most of the helmets, um, which you can swap out for 31 mil cheek pads. If you buy it from Showy Authorized Reseller, they should do that free for you. Um, but yeah, it's a moisture wicking interior, very nice. Uh, and it's really, really smart. On the back here, we've got room for the center backpack uh, where the battery lives and powers the center uh, intercom system. And then obviously the, uh, the little uh, speakers are in there and, and that's where they kind of go. But yeah, really, really nice interior. Smells like a brand new car when you actually put it on from brand new. Now, what I'm gonna be doing with this one is actually doing a uh, on-road review. So. Um, we'll let you know how that goes, um, but I will also be doing a moto blog setup. So once my camera's here, then you get to see how I do that. Okay, so I just thought I'd show you what it looks like to put on the Shoei GT Air 2 here. So you're supposed to grab it by the straps here, pull them wide, and then place it over the crown of your head, and then just push it down. Now this is the size small. I am a size small in helmet sizes because I've got a tiny head. So let's put it on. Like that. And then the ratcheting system just kind of goes on like so. Um, full disclosure, I actually swapped mine from the 35 mil pads to 31 mil pads because I found they were a bit too squished um, against my cheeks and they're a bit uncomfortable. But the 31 mil pads fit absolutely spot on. Um, but the helmet fit as well, it's 1,400 grams without the center SRL2 system. With the Senna SRL2 system, it adds an additional 50 grams, so bear that in mind, but it is still quite a lightweight helmet, considering it's one that's got the sun visor installed. So yeah, that's what it kind of looks like here, uh, from the side and the back. You know, uh, nice sleek, uh, decent looking helmet. If you want one with all the bells and whistles with the intercom and the uh, uh, sun visor as well. So if you put the sun visor down, that's how much it comes down by there. Um, you know, you do have a little uh, nose cut out there, which on me personally, I can kind of see it in my vision. So I have to kind of look through it. Um, so it's got a bit of a learning curve to get used to that. Um, but uh, yeah, it is it is there. It, it is quite a big visor and it pretty much covers most of your uh, um, kind of view uh, when you're looking out from the thing. And then when you have the helmet uh, visor down, like I said, uh, you need to clip it uh, once it's down to make that perfect seal on the latch. Um, but it, uh, it's a really nice visor, very, very clear, very, very clean. You can see all the way through it as well. The pin lock adds a slight uh, bluey tint, um, but it's not really noticeable. And it helps with uh, glare from the uh, the sun there. So like I said, with this chin strap, um, try it on in store, but as you can see here, um, it is actually touching my neck there. And this is on its longest setting, so it can get a bit irritating, uh, but we'll see on the ride out how irritating it is. It looks like the nylon pad doesn't actually cover the strap completely. So that's something to bear in mind. So we'll have a look on the ride out anyway, what the sound and performance is like. Uh, center SRL2 there, you have to use it with two uh, fingers to turn it on, um, which are quite fiddly because they're quite small, but you do get used to it because there's only three buttons and then you just got to feel up for that dip there where the glove, uh, with your glove, and then you can turn it on and off. So quite straightforward. If you want to unlock it, you just press the latch, pull that down, and obviously just slide it out like that. Quite straightforward. Okay guys, so I'm out on the road here. 
um, and I've got the Insta360 ONE RS with the Purple Panda microphone. I'll have all the links in the description below if you want to check it out. Um, but this is my motor vlog setup that I set up on the Shoei GTR2. Quite a neat little setup. Um, I've done a separate video on how to set this thing up if you want, if you're interested in having a setup like this. Um, you know, but this is one of the first times I'm using it, so uh, you know, let us uh, know what you think of it in the comments. Anyway. Um, but yeah, so the Shoei uh, GTR 2, I've had it for a while now, probably about a month, and I've done quite a few uh, miles on it to make a decent enough decision about some things of the GTR 2. Um, so, uh, what, let's have a look. The first thing I'd like to mention is the, the chin strap. So the chin strap on the Shoei GTR 2 um quite a few people have said this as well so depending on what you think of it you might have a different opinion but the uh, uh the chin strap is quite short and what that means is you might find it in a position where it actually touches your adam's apple i have kind of mentioned it earlier um but when you're riding um it kind of rubs against your chin um and it can be a bit annoying so what i've done to kind of make it a bit more comfortable is i've actually removed the um the rubber boot that kind of goes over the chin strap and that gives you a bit more extra slack and then once you've done that it makes it a bit more comfortable um so that's what i've done and it actually it is a bit more comfortable now that i remove that rubber boot because the, it's not as chunky and it's not rubbing against my neck as much yeah, that's one thing you can bear in mind so that's something you're just gonna have to try and and um you're just gonna have to try and uh, try the GTA 2 out yourself in a shop maybe and see what you think of it there. Um, so that's the chin strap. Another thing uh, is the cheek pads. So by default, you'll come with 35 millimeter thick cheek pads uh, on the uh, GTA 2, um, which are quite snug fitting. And obviously this all kind of depends. Um, what's all the bloody road works here? So many road works. Um, so yeah, the cheek pads, that all kind of depends on obviously the, the wearer itself. If you've got really thick, big cheeks, um, you know, you've got them hamster cheeks and you find that it's too tight and a bit uncomfortable. The good thing is about the, uh, about Shoei is they offer multiple different size cheek pads and cheek pad fillers that you can get your perfect fit in, which is quite cool. Um, so I found the 35 mil cheek pads were a bit too tight for me personally. Um, so what I ended up going for is I ordered a set of 31 mil cheek pads. Now, if you get it from a show we offer as retailer, they'll actually swap out the cheek pads for you for free, which is what my one did, which is very grateful for them. So I sent them the 35 mil cheek pads back, and then I ended up getting the 31 mil cheek pads um which were uh, you know more loose um they're, they weren't squishing my head as much um and i found them to be a lot more comfortable a lot more roomier but then again i also found it to be a bit too loose like it wasn't snug enough then with a 31 mil cheek pads um, but luckily showy also sell a two mil cheek pad filler um, that you can add on to either the 35 or the 31 mil cheek pads. So I ended up ordering that, which I paid for separately. It's only a cheap bit of like, uh, it's only about five, six pounds. Um, and it allows you to kind of fill out the cheek pads by an additional two millimeters to get that perfect fit. And I found that that worked better for me. So I use the 31 mil cheek pads plus the two mil uh, filler to take it to a 33 mil cheap pad and now it fits absolutely perfectly and it's really really comfortable and snug and it feels a lot safer um, so that's the good thing about Shoei is that they give you that options to make it the perfect fitting helmet um, so that was great as well um, what else I would say the um, the front visor here that kind of comes down you know the sun visor it feels really nice and it's quite easy to operate um, and it doesn't kind of make any noises anything like that when you've got it on uh, you know like a whistling noise or anything but what I would say is the cutout here for the nose um, it kind of sits in my peripheral vision just slightly below it and I can kind of see I can, I can notice the uh, the, the little uh, cutout there of the um, uh, the sun visor 
Um, so uh, that'll take a bit of getting used to, to be honest, because I've used the helmet for quite a while. I can already kind of, um, I find myself not noticing it as much as I used to. Um, so that's just another thing that you might have to adjust to, to bear in mind. Um, in terms of like the airflow around the helmet, it's actually pretty good, um, the airflow. So you get um, a front vent, which obviously is blocked by my action camera now, um, but you've got the top vent as well, quite a solid uh, mechanism really um, to uh, move it in and out. But the um, but it, se it seems to work quite well, the helmet's quite well ventilated and it also feels quite lightweight as well. Obviously I've add added a bit more weight to it now that I've got the uh, action cam set up going on. Um, but that's just you know a price I'm willing to pay uh, to record this footage for you guys. Another thing with the uh, GTA 2, um, when I had my Shark Squall helmet, um, when I had the uh, visor up like this, how it is now, um, you got a lot of wind noise, wind uh, buffeting as the wind kind of went through the uh, visor. Um, now, Shoei do a lot of wind tunnel testing um, when they're developing their helmets and they actually do them um, in regards to a naked bike. And the reason why they do it on a naked bike is because there's so many different types of fared bikes out there with different kind of aerodynamics and um, you know so there's no point doing your testing on a fared bike because every fared bike will have different wind geometry um, whereas every naked bike should have pretty much the same wind geometry um, so you might find on a naked bike which is what i've got here x diavel s it's a lot more um, suited because uh, that's what they developed it on so that's something to bear in mind so when i've got the advisor up there I don't hear any wind whistling going through as I'm at doing speed with the visor up, which is really, really good um, because they've considered that when uh, they were developing the helmet. Um, even with the sun visor down or up, you don't get any wind uh, noise um, in terms of like whistling. Obviously, you're going to get wind noise, but you're not going to get the whistling is what I mean. Um, so that's quite good that they've considered that. Um, Another thing I'd like to mention is, uh, depending on you know, how fast you're going, but when you've got the sun visor down, you can feel the wind come underneath the sun visor at times and blow kind of a bit into your eyes. Um, now, I don't know if that's just me, but I have kind of noticed it a bit. Um, it's not like completely annoying, um, but it is there. And I can feel it kind of going into my face from underneath the, um, the sun visor um, so it might be something that you want to consider that um, if you're considering the helmet um, but when you've got the visor up you don't notice any of that um, but obviously it has got this removable kind of nose here um, which you can um, remove as well so that might actually stop that from happening I don't know I've not actually tested that but that's just another thing to bear in mind another thing was the Senna SRL uh, intercom system um, so the uh, when I first got it they only did the SRL2 <laughs> and to be honest the SRL2 is a bit of a crappy system when I tried it the uh, the he headphones were really they're just shit to be honest like they're quite um, tinny they've got zero bass the sound stage is terrible uh, the functionality and stuff work fine it uses the older version of the Senna app but I was comparing it to my previous Senna 20S, which has got the HD speakers, which is actually uh, an older unit. Um, but it sounds worse than them. And uh, I was expecting to be on par, and it just wasn't, it was terrible. So um, I uh, returned them, because they just weren't good enough. Um, and they actually have now released a newer version called the Senna SRL Mesh, which is very, very new. It's only come out, I think, last month. Um, but the SRL Mesh system um, is actually powered by Harman Kardon speakers. And it's day and night difference in terms of audio quality compared to the Senna SRL 2. So if you are kind of a bit of a audio snob, <coughs> I would not recommend even bothering with the Senna uh, SRL2 because you just won't be happy with it. I know I wasn't. And go for the Senna SRL Mesh. 
Um, but the problem is it's a lot more expensive as well. The SRL2 is already expensive at £220, but uh, you can get a bit of a cheating app cheaper now because the SRL mesh is out. But the SRL mesh is like 330 so it's quite expensive. You're probably going to get deals if you buy it alongside with the helmet. Um, but the SRL mesh, yeah, it's just uh, way... It is very expensive, but you do get the newest, uh, uh, you know, quantum technology with the center stuff. You get the uh, the mesh uh, system antennas. Um, I've got a video of it all. So, you know, check it out in the description if you want to have a look at it with the Vi-Links. Um, but I'd recommend going for that one instead of the SRL2. If you plan on keeping the helmet for quite a while, you'll be a lot more happier with it. Um, but yeah, uh, overall that's pretty much it really. GTR 2 is a great helmet uh, over in those pain points. It's quite comfortable. I like it. You know, it comes in three shell sizes. Um, uh, it's, it smells nice. <laughs> you know, it smells like a new car when you put it on. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd recommend it, especially for uh, if you're going for a motor vlog setup where you want everything in integrated, which includes your comms that you've got, because you've got the SRL mesh, which includes your... Uh, um, uh, you know, your, your, what was I going to say, the action cam with uh, the microphone and stuff like that, you know, if you want to check out the setup or how I did it. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think guys in the comments of the Shoei GTA Air 2. If there's any questions you've got in particular about it, give us a shout and I'll catch you on the next one.